All right. So welcome to the webinar on nutrition for female athletes. The uh, subject for tonight that we're going to be covering is how to fuel for performance and recovery while also addressing some body issues. Now, as we go through this webinar, I want you to really understand that there's a lot of new information that's going to be presented tonight. And please don't hesitate to reach out to me at the very end. I'll um, throw up my email address if you have questions following this, if you would like a follow-up on anything. I am more than happy to provide more resources for you so that you can really absorb a lot of this great information to help your athletes out. Um, so let's get started. First to introduce myself, I am Dr. Beth Westy. Uh, I was a three-sport athlete in high school and uh, played volleyball in college. Um, I was also a two-time volleyball state champion in high school. I earned a full scholarship to a NCAA Division II school and paid for my four years of, of college. Um, and I also got two invitations to play on a professional teams overseas, one in Europe and one in Australia. And um, turned down those invitations to attend uh, Northwestern Chiropractic School and get my doctorate. From there, I opened up an office, um, you know, spent years treating patients, working with athletes as well in a clinical setting. And then also, I have coached at Northern Lights um, JO Club, one of the top volleyball clubs in the Midwest as well as across the country. And now I currently do a lot of lectures for athletes, parents, and coaches about nutrition and about really getting their athletes the best nutrition for their bodies. So let's just do a quick overview on food, how food is used, and, and how it gets absorbed into the body. So first off, uh, food could be basically chunked into one of three different categories, either a carb, fat, or a protein. And it's, all foods kind of lump into one of these three categories. The best types of food actually contain about equal amounts of all of these uh, categories. So when we talk about carbs and athletes, it can be a very controversial subject because so many times athletes get recommendations on how many carbs to eat based off of old recommendations, old research that's been done that doesn't pertain to athletes today. If you think about it, athletes today, especially if they're in a highly competitive sport, they will really spend quite a bit of time um, on the court and training. And training regimens nowadays are very, very different than what they used to be 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 50 years ago. And honestly, the information for nutrition that's out there is more than 50 years old. It's, it's quite old, and the research has not been updated to match the demands that are put on bodies today. I mean, just think about when you were, you know, if um, for parents, you know, older generations, you know, pictures of athletes, you know, back in the day. You know, like the, a good example would be gymnastics, if you watch gymnastics at all or follow it through the Olympics, you can see some of the gymnasts from the 70s, late 70s, tiny little, um, very slender figures. And you see some of the gymnasts that are today and those girls are built. Those girls have a lot of muscle um, and a lot of mass. And it does, because their bodies are trained differently, which is fantastic. They can reach new levels in the sport, but it also takes a different amount of fuel, a different amount of nutrition to get there. So that's a big piece of what's been missing out of the nutrition for athletes nowadays. So it's important to understand that after about eight hours, your body has burned stored carb. So the biggest misconception that people have with carbohydrates is that athletes need to carb load the night before. And that can be helpful only when you're performing earlier in the day. If you have a morning game or morning tournament that you're playing in, it can be helpful to get a lot of that carb stored in your body at night so that it's available in the morning and in that first part of the day. For high school season, for volleyball athletes, 
when their games start, especially for varsity, if they're starting at 7 o'clock at night, to carb load the night before is not an efficient use of carb. The carb actually gets burned in the first part of the day, and whatever doesn't get burned then gets transferred to fat and stored in the body. So it's actually working against you and not providing you the nutrients your body needs at the right time for performance for the game. So it's really important that you're getting the right amount of carb and fueling your body properly throughout the day to perform well at night. So athletes, when they are supplied the right nutrients for energy, it lasts for hours, meaning athletes can find that they have more energy, they get more energy from their food, and it's longer lasting. That's going to show in their performance on and off the court. So let's jump right into performance, stamina, and endurance. Now, first thing we're going to cover is protein. Protein is essential because every cell and body system uses it all the time. It's necessary for life. Great sources you can get it from are cheese, yeah, any dairy products like cheese, yogurt, and cottage cheese. Remember with um, cheeses, there are some cheeses that can be a little lower in fat, uh, like mozzarella cheese, yet high in protein. Yogurt, an excellent choice of yogurt would be Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt has been found to have higher amounts of protein in it. But also note that when you are purchasing or looking at yogurts or some of these other dairy products, make sure you're looking at the amount of sugar and protein in them. A lot of times, especially with yogurt, they'll have flavored yogurt, fruit yogurt, all these things, but they'll put in a lot of sugar so that when you read the label, there's actually more sugar than protein in that yogurt. It's actually going against what you want in terms of really being helpful for protein loading. So always check to make sure that your pro that your the there's more protein in the yogurt than there is sugar or carbs. Cottage cheese is also a great source of protein. Um, and there's meat and fish, of course, that have a lot of protein in them. Peas and beans contain protein, eggs, and then of course supplementing with protein powders and bars. And for athletes to get the amount of protein they need, and for how on the go they are, for how busy they are in their schedules and to keep things moving, having a great protein powder and protein bar available makes sure that they're going to get the protein they need throughout the day and get it in a quick fashion. When to get protein. So it's essential that you space protein evenly throughout the day and have it right away in the morning for breakfast. Um, and, and also it's very important to have it before and after they play, athletes play. The body needs to have that energy source available before playing, and then they need protein afterwards to help rebuild and replenish the body after taxing their system. It's important to have it evenly throughout the day so that your body can actually absorb the maximum amount of protein that you're getting, meaning if you try and eat all your protein for the day in one meal, it's too much for your body to absorb and you're not going to absorb a lot of it. And you'll just end up with a stomach ache. So it is important to evenly space out your protein throughout the day. What does that look like? Well, here's an example. Say in the morning, <clears throat> um, an athlete has eggs for breakfast. Eggs contain about, one egg has about seven grams of protein. So say, an athlete has two scrambled eggs. And then they also have some Greek yogurt. There could be anywhere from 12 to 20 grams of protein in Greek yogurt, depending on the, the type of yogurt you get. So say that's 14 grams of protein, plus we'll just round it up to, you know, say 15, gram, you know, 15 or 16 grams with the yogurt. So it's about 30 grams of protein right away in the morning for breakfast. Now, Lunch is also an essential time to get protein in the body. I know sometimes at school the lunches you know, may not be sufficient, but encourage your athletes to eat really healthy and get protein for lunch and a really healthy protein source. Uh, say they have a turkey sandwich and there's a few slices of turkey on there. Again, they can have you know 20 to 25 grams of protein there at lunch. So they have a protein bar before they start practice. 
and then maybe some steak with dinner. Now that's going to equal about 120 to 130 grams of protein for the day, which is actually a right amount for an athlete that's in about 125 pounds. So how much protein should an athlete target in getting in their body? It should be about how much lean body mass they have. 125 pound athlete eating about 125 grams of protein a day. When athletes start doing this, I suggest often that they use some type of an app to track just to kind of get used to counting how much protein they eat. Um, we'll get into later some of the uh, body image issues, but a lot of the information they're given around this is not correct and accurate for what athletes actually need. So I do encourage athletes to count protein grams. I never really focus on, on calories, that type of a thing, because it's not an accurate way to really track um, nutrition for an athlete. They're training so much. They're pushing themselves. And you know, for games or tournaments, they're putting their body under so much strain and stress and they need so much output that it's not necessary to track exact input all the time. So counting the grams can be very, very helpful. And, and using an app to do that, there are lots of apps. Calorie count, I know, is one. It does count calories, but again, like I said, I don't pay attention to that. You just enter in the food, and it tracks how much protein is available for, uh, for the day for what you've eaten. So uh, a great way, though, to support the lean body mass, to give them the fuel they need, and to increase energy all day long. Uh, after eating this way for about a week or two, an athlete will notice an increase in energy, not just on the court or not just, you know, when they're training or working out. That will be a huge difference, a huge change, but also off the court. Athletes will notice a huge boost of energy starting right from the beginning of the day. I've had so many athletes tell me that after they start eating a lot more protein, that they wake up right away in the morning and they feel like they have more energy right away. They notice that they have more mental clarity. Um, it, it feels easier to just prep for the day and get ready, and they feel like they have energy all day long, even going into practice. And the most important piece is that they feel like they have energy at the end of practice. And that's a time when the body is running out of fuel and it's using all of its reserves to keep going and keep pushing, and the athlete still has energy at that point. So physical energy and mental energy, very, very essential and very important. Next thing we're going to talk about is the carbohydrate. We touched on this a little bit with the carb loading, um, but really carbohydrates are important and they're essential. They're the main source of energy for the brain and the body. So it is not beneficial for an athlete to cut out carbohydrates completely. Um, that is not a healthy way uh, a healthy diet or nutrition plan to follow for athletes. So some carbohydrates are essential. Now, good sources of carbohydrate, you can get them from breads, pastas, there's quinoa, potatoes, sweet potatoes, rice, and fruit. Fruit is also included in a carbohydrate because of the amount of sugars in it. Um, I'm not going to get into complex versus simple carbohydrates. Your body burns the simple carbohydrates quicker, complex burns a little bit slower, but overall, whatever doesn't get burned does get stored. Um, so it is beneficial that when you're eating carbohydrates, you do eat them throughout the day. Eat them regularly, evenly throughout the day. That way you're avoiding a big influx of carb, of sugar, that's going to that's gonna spike blood sugar, which then follows by a drop. So oftentimes, I've seen so many athletes do this. I've seen them do it before practice, before games, before in, in the middle of tournaments. It can be the worst. They're on a little break from a tournament, you know, or they, you know the schedule, play ref, play ref, sit play, or whatnot, and they get a little bit of a break, and they go and they eat something, and they're thinking, I'm eating something healthy. I'm making a healthy choice. I'm eating some carrots and a granola bar. Okay? No, but that's not, quote, unquote, healthy. It's just not a choice to really give you energy for the rest of the tournament. Carrots actually have a lot of sugar in them, and they're, um, they're going to be burned a lot faster. The granola bar, again, 
carbohydrate. It's going to be burned really quickly. When an athlete is performing, that carbohydrate can get burned in 30 minutes. And you'll see it too. You'll see it with these athletes when they eat a lot of the carbs at a break and then they step on the court again. They might look like they've got a ton of energy at the beginning of the game. By the end of the game, they are dragging. It is rough. It is a struggle. Um, it is a it is a very big struggle to keep it going at the at the end of the game. So it can be really really tough to keep it going when athletes eat too much carb or they're not getting the right amount of carb. Now another thing um, to really make sure that you're watching with the carb amount is for recovery. Carbs can be very important for recovery. They can be really, really beneficial to help the athletes come back from a game or a practice that's been specifically tough because those carbs, they, uh, it's brain fuel. They get into the brain and they're, they're able to use really, really quickly. The one thing to watch, though, is that they're not overdoing it on the carbs during the recovery phase. A very common thing can be athletes will, um, you know, eat pizza or something following a game. And uh, that's not going to be the best recovery food because it's a lot of carb. It's going to get into their bloodstream, and then they're going to crash later. So about how much carb should athletes be getting? Uh, and depending on the age and, and everything else, it can be anywhere from 150 grams to 200 grams per day and, and maybe even more. But, you know, if, if the, um, but that would mean that also the amount of protein is going up to if your athlete needs that much carb. Performance, stamina, and endurance. Now we're going to talk about fats. Uh, fats are essential. They are an essential source of energy. They actually provide the most amount of energy per gram. Um, proteins and carbs actually only give you about four, I call them grams of energy, whereas um, fats are going to give you nine. So almost over double the amount of energy you're going to get from fats than from proteins and carbs. Great sources are from oils, uh, like coconut oil, olive oil, nuts, and avocados. Those are really healthy sources of fat. Most important time to eat fats are going to be in the morning. Most amount of fat you should eat for the day is right away in the morning. Benefit of that is that it's actually going to help your blood sugar level out throughout the day. It's going to give you a big, um, a big amount of um, fat in the morning to slowly burn all day long. And you're going to have less peaks and valleys with your blood sugar, which means there's going to be less cravings and less crash. That's also going to help with the energy throughout the day. Oftentimes when athletes eat more fat in the morning, by the end of the day, they notice that, yeah, I feel like I have more energy, or even though that was a tough practice, I don't feel like I'm going to you know, fall over right now. I still feel like I can get the rest of my things done or finish my homework or whatnot. So it's important to have that throughout the day, too. But, you know, um, really having the majority of them for in the morning. Um, how, much per, how much fat to eat is going to be about 100 grams per day. And again, that, that's going to vary maybe, you know, uh, per athlete, but having that much healthy fat is going to give that athlete the energy that they need. When we talk about recovery, there are a few very important things to, to keep in mind. There is going to be the timing of your nutrition and the balance of nutrition. So talking about timing of nutrition, it's very important that you, the athlete eats within 30 minutes of exercising. So after they're done with practice or a workout or what whatnot, they need to be eating a healthy um, source of food within 30 minutes. Otherwise, the body doesn't get that fuel and it's not going to grow, develop. It's, it's not going to be able to replenish what it needs. So eating within 30 minutes, even if it's a small amount, even if it's just a handful of almonds or half of a protein bar, even a little bit of a protein shake, something is going to give that athlete what they need. Drinking water. Drinking water is very, very important. Um, as, the, as the body want, needs to recover, drinking water is going to help the body absorb more nutrients as well. And now another thing when talking about absorbing nutrients, it's also essential that at this point, athletes chew slowly. 
might sound like a funny thing, but um, I, I've been around athletes for most of my life and seeing how they eat, how we eat. And it, it, it's not pretty sometimes. And, absorb, you know, just wolfing food down, just shoveling it in your mouth because they're so hungry. And not chewing it actually prevents you, the athlete from absorbing the food like they should. So it's, it's very important that they chew slowly, break it down, absorb the food, and they're going to get the nutrients that they need. The other part about balanced nutrition, you want to make sure that, especially for recovery, they're getting equal parts of protein, fat, and carb. Again, like I said earlier, I know pizza is, is a common, you know, food after eat, you know, after exercise, after a game or something, um, but really is one of the worst, worst foods that you could be eating after um, just the high amount of carb there. Um, so having a good amount of protein and fat. Another thing that can be really tough for athletes is is the the amount of sweets. Um, and and I grew up on teams that did this too. You had a game or something, and you would go to Dairy Queen afterwards, or you would go to you know something afterward, you know, some place to get a dessert after the game. And it can be a nice you know celebration time, which is great, but Make sure that the, the, the athletes have something else to eat as well, some type of protein you know, to balance out that sugar. Um, otherwise, they're going to get that spike and drop, and their body's not going to be able to handle or recover very well. The muscles really need to recover when they've, um, when they've been exercised or when they've worked out really hard. And it's really tough for the muscles to do that if they're not getting protein and it's just sugar. The body then doesn't have anything to run off of long term. And then when they sleep at night, they're not going to be recovering as well as they should. Another thing to account for, again, depending on the age of your athletes, is to account for growth spurts. Athletes and girls, they will have growth spurts to 18, 19, 20, 21 years old. And know that if the athlete feels like they need more or they're not getting enough, that they may be going through some type of growth spurt. And, and sometimes it's, it's easy to forget about that with these athletes because if you're seeing them every day, you, know, you might not be seeing that change happen right away, but if for some reason something seems a little off with them or they don't seem to be, you know, as, as they don't have the same pep as they did, it could be that they're going through a growth spurt and that they need more nutrient to supply their body with what they need and, and potentially a little extra rest too. So the next thing in talking about rest, recovery position, here's a, a picture of a great recovery position, and it's just literally laying down with the legs up against the wall. That's going to help recover. It's going to help the muscles rest as well. Stretching is important, um, and stretch. each stretch should be held for 30 seconds to actually stretch the muscle. It takes at least 30 seconds for muscle fibers to stretch. Ice baths can be helpful, too, for recovery as long as there's movement within the joint. So, for example, if, the, if there's a big ice tub for an athlete to go and to ice down their legs, they need to be walking or moving their legs in there. Now, of course, this recovery, these other recovery tips, they can be done after they've eaten some type of nutrient after playing. So, say they went through a really tough practice or training session, having a healthy snack, having a protein bar, then doing the recovery position, stretching, and ice bath is perfect. Sleep for athletes, they're going to need anywhere from 9 to 11 hours. The more sleep that they can get, the more restful sleep they can get, it's going to be that much more helpful for recovery for them. And cell replication, meaning their, their body is just going to be that much fresher. Another little tip with sleep, and this has been shown in many studies that have been with, um, they do it a lot with adults and in the corporate setting, that type of thing. But it's a big factor for athletes as well. If they're looking at screens late at night, it will hinder their sleep and their rest. So shutting off electronics 30 minutes before going to bed will help them sleep and rest better. Little thing to make a huge difference. Supplements to make sure that athletes are taking are going to be a multivitamin and a vitamin D. 
multivitamin, just make sure you're covering your bases with nutrients. Uh, sometimes, you know, with schedules and busy athletes on the go all the time, it can be tough to make sure that you're getting all the vitamins that you need all the time. So getting that multivitamin is just a great insurance policy that the body is going to absorb the nutrients it needs. The vitamin D is essential. There is so much vitamin D deficiency. And with athletes that are in a gym a lot of the time, training and playing, they're not out in the sunshine nearly enough to absorb the vitamin D that they really need. So adding that vitamin D supplement can help a ton. Also, higher amounts of vitamin D have been shown to boost the immune system. Also very important, when your athletes are under a lot of stress and strain from school, from travel, from playing, all that stuff, vitamin D is going to make a big difference there. Another thing with recovery that um, is missed a lot with athletes is sticking to the same nutrition plan on off days. So days that they're not playing or rest days. I've seen athletes go on either one end or the other end of the spectrum with this. So that I've rarely seen it right down the middle. One end of the spectrum is when they have an off day and they know they're not playing, they think this is a free-for-all day. I'm going to binge. I'm going to eat whatever I want and however much I can shove in my face. And that's not, that's not healthy or helpful for the body, you know, as it needs to fuel and rest. It's, your body's using that rest day. Your body needs that rest day for a reason, and it needs it to refuel. So it's important to make sure that those athletes are still getting those amounts of protein and those healthy fats on their off days. Keeping on that same nutrition plan is going to fuel the body to give them the energy that they need the next day when they start playing again. Now on the other end of the spectrum that I've seen with athletes is for some reason they think that, uh, and, and you know they've read something or come across something where it said, oh, if I'm not working out, I don't need to eat or I can't eat as much as I normally would if I'm working out that day. They go by the day, and that's not how an athlete's body works. When they're working out that much, you know, all week long, all month long, for months at a time, their metabolism is a lot higher, they're burning things at a higher rate, and their body needs that fuel. If they all of a sudden do not eat the right amount of food on an off day, their body's going to go into starvation mode a heck of a lot faster. So it is very important that these athletes understand that they still need to eat. They still need to eat an appropriate amount of food, even if they're not performing, even if they're not playing on their off day, just to make sure their body is resting properly, it can recover from everything, and then start fresh the next time that they play. The other thing we're going to touch on is body image. And every lecture that I have done with an athletic team, um, with a female athletic team, I have had girls, and it's anywhere from three to five girls, stay after I'm done speaking and talk to me about body image. And they get very concerned with the amount of food I recommend for them to eat and that, that much protein and everything. And the word fat can freak them out because they are very worried about body image. And some girls I have chatted with, they are very open that, yes, they have an eating disorder. And this is prevalent on a lot of teams. And oftentimes athletes may talk about it amongst themselves, but they won't notify coaches. And, and parents may not even know the the extent of, of a problem, um, but I, I want to address it here because I think it's very important to understand, and it's important for coaches to un, to understand and to address with their teams and, and address it on a regular basis. Addressing it on a regular basis because these these athletes are getting other information from other sources on a regular basis, and it's not correct, and it, and it doesn't apply to them, and they, they don't necessarily understand that, though. These gals, they're getting a constant media bombardment. They're just getting flooded with information that is not correct for them, meaning they'll be reading a magazine and read, oh, this actress and this famous, this famous actress that starred in this movie, this popular movie, oh, she was so fit and healthy for this role. 
what was her, what does her lunch look like? Oh, here's her lunch. And the magazine will lay out, oh, she has this tiny salad with some nuts on it and a tiny piece of salmon and blah, blah, blah. And it's not, it's not a, you know, regular amount of food or whatnot. But, you know, yes, it's a healthy choice, but it's not necessarily in the correct ratios that an athlete would need. But that's the information that they're getting. They'll see that, they'll look at those, that nutrient information, and they think it applies to them. And they don't know, behind the scenes, they don't know that those, af those actresses or, or whatever, they're not eating correctly for health. They're eating to maybe get to a certain size for that role. Once they're done with that role, they don't stay on that diet. They go off of it. It's the same thing, you know, for bodybuilders and other people in fitness magazines. They do not eat like that all the time. When there's a fitness magazine cover shoot, these, um, these models, these fitness models, they actually take eight weeks before that fitness shoot to really trim down their diet. And then after the fitness shoot, they go off of their diet and they eat what I call normal again. Because it's not a normal diet, it's not a healthy diet to stay on long term, but that's what they put in the magazines. And then, of course, they Photoshop and everything on top of it. But these girls don't understand that that's the reality of it. That's what's really happening. A reason I know this, that that's how this happens, is that I have friends and colleagues that do fitness shows and that are fitness models. And my sister is a model and has done fitness modeling. And it's, it's really funny because I was always the athlete in the family, and she is not an athlete, could not catch a softball to save her life. But she was able to be in fitness magazines um, <laughs> as a fitness model because she just altered her nutrition around it. That was it. So it's not a normal way of eating. It's not a healthy way of eating or a way that these models even sustain all the time. They do it just for the photo shoot, and then they go off of it. So it doesn't even really apply to athletes. Another thing for these athletes to consider is that oftentimes they'll compare themselves to their non-athlete friends or family. They'll compare what they're eating to their friends at the lunch table that are not on their team or not playing or training as hard as they are. Um, and, and it's not an accurate or fair comparison. Or family members too, and especially with girls at this age, it, it can be, you know, teenage girls, it can be a tough time. And it is very important that parents, I always encourage, whenever I speak, I always encourage parents and family members to attend as well so that they can get the same information and understand what these female athletes need, need to be healthy and need to perform at their best. Um, so it will be different and their, their needs are different because they're asking something different of their body. So their nutritional needs are going to be different. So comparing it to what everybody else at their lunch table eats or what their family eats is not a fair comparison. And the other important thing about getting the right nutrition information is that um, it really makes sure that your body is its healthiest. When your body's the healthiest, it's going to perform at its best. That's, it's just that simple. When these girls are getting this incorrect nutrition information, and not getting the right food in their body all the time, it can actually cause nutritional deficiencies. There are a lot of athletes that can be vitamin D deficient or anemic or whatnot. This not only is tough physically on them, it's tough mentally on them. It's going to affect their thought process, their energy, their focus, concentration, and it also can lead to even more skewed body image issues. So, if there's a huge underlying factor here about getting these gals, getting these athletes the right food and making sure that they are fueled properly to be healthy and to have a positive body image about themselves. One thing that I talk about when I speak with girls is to, to honor their body. And it's thinking about your body in a completely different way. Your body honors you by performing the tasks that you ask it to by showing up and by working hard and by building muscle and performing for you. The way you reward or, you know, or honor your body back is by giving it the nutrients that it needs. And that way it can then show up for you the next day and perform again and, and take you 
to your goals and so you can reach your athletic goals, whatever they may be. So I always talk with the ladies about honoring their body for what it is and giving it that food. It's as simple as that. So this is the information that I, I have for everyone today. I hope you enjoyed the information. We touched on a lot of different subjects, very, very important subjects, though. Um, I would encourage you, please, if you do have questions, my email address here that I have listed on top is drbeth at drbethwesty.com. And email me if you would like some more information, if you have questions on anything. There's also here uh, a chart. Now, this is just a sample of a practice day, game day, a couple different um, types of game day charts. Then there's also another chart that lists out specific proteins, fats, and carbs. When I speak to different groups, these are the charts that I actually hand out. I laminate them, hand them out as a resource for players, for parents. They keep them in their bags, they take them to the grocery store, and then they follow these charts about how much to eat and when and at what time to keep their body fueled. If you're interested in this, I am more than happy to send it to you as a free resource. Just send me an email at drbeth at drbethwesty.com, and I will get this chart out to you. Um, I usually print them front to back and, and then cut them in a, you know, on an 8 by 11 and a half sheet of paper or eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, cut them in half and, and hand them out. Um, so if, you, if you're interested in the chart, email me. If you're curious about my speaking schedule or, or wanting more information or would love for me to come speak to you, your team, group of people, again, I'm more than happy. Email me, um, email me some information and, and I would love to get in touch with you and, and just get this information out to more athletes because I know it can be so essential and can help so many, so many female athletes not only perform at their best, recover at their best, but also be their healthiest on the court and off the court. So thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you guys have a great night.